If your video inside Premiere Pro is stu stu stuttering, choppy, or laggy, don't panic. In this video, we're gonna break down exactly why it happens and fix it step by step. Let's get into it. Internet, what's going down? It's Tea Garden. Today, we are talking about why your Premiere Pro project might be running slow. And the first thing we're going to be talking about has a bunch to do with media encoder. The first thing is what is happening with your uncompressed or your raw file formats the things that are enormous. So stuff that is 4K, 6K, raw files that are coming out of Blackmagic or Canon R5s. These things are just massive files. And a lot of the times what you need to do is transcode them inside a media encoder in order to make sure that you have a proxy workflow that is a more compressed file that you're going to be editing and working off of that then renders inside of Adobe Media Encoder full res when you're ready to go. In order to do that, we're gonna go up in here into Premiere. We're gonna go and look for some footage. I can right click on this footage. I can go down to proxy and it creates proxy here. When I do that, it's gonna pop up a dialog box and ask me which type of preset that I want. ProRes is usually the one that I go to. DNxHR is another good one. Uh, usually what you're looking for is some form of compressed file size. Usually a quarter is good, although you can customize this thing if you want to. You're gonna click OK, and when you do, immediately it's going to bring up Media Encoder and start to render or transcode your file to the settings that you have selected. Pretty nifty stuff. Let's move on to our second one. Another situation that you might come into is variable frame rates or different different frame rates from different cameras or different capture software. So let's just say you have a regular DSLR, you have a GoPro, you have a drone footage, maybe you even have a screen capture. All of those things could potentially be in different frame rates. And if you have those sorts of things going on in your timeline, it could cause havoc in how it's being processed. A way of handling that one as well as you right click over here, you go to modify, you go to interpret footage and you can assume a particular frame rate and change how that footage is actually going to be perceived on your timeline and it could potentially speed up your editing workflow. The next one that we wanna talk about is a codec bottleneck and a codec bottleneck really is exactly what you would think it is. It's a particular type of codec that's just really difficult for Premiere Pro to read. So things like H.265 or HEVC, those types of things really are like very CPU heavy and it takes a lot for your processor to be able to work with them easily. Guess what though? The solution for that is very similar to what we were doing before and that you just right click, you go to have a proxy or you can also transcode that footage. You just simply go into Media Encoder, grab your footage, drop it in here. You can change the settings to what you want it to look like and you should be able to have yourself a piece of footage that is a little bit easier to work with. I've done a video a while back on the channel about proxy workflows and transcoding. I'll leave a link to that thing in the description for you to check it out if you want a little bit more of an in-depth view on exactly how to use proxy workflows. Let's move on to what your CPU is doing and what your actual physical requirements are for your computer. Now, if you're editing on an older machine, you wanna make sure that you have at least 16 gigabits of RAM for your computer to be processing Premiere Pro efficiently. In order for you to figure out exactly what that is, you can go up to this Apple here. If you're on a Mac, go to About, and you can see where your memory is there, you can click more info to get additional information there. If you're running close to 16 gigabits, one thing that you can do is actually change the resolution playback here in this window. You'll see you have full, half, quarter, eighth, and sixteenths. It'll actually change the act, the preview that you're seeing, so it'll make it a much more grainy, lower resolution playback so that you can actually not take as much data in off of your GPU, sorry, your CPU, in order to be able to look at something like this. Next thing that you want to be looking at is making sure that your GPU is set up correctly, specifically the GPU accelerator. In order to do that, we're going to go up to file. We're going to go to project settings, general, and you want to make sure that in the renderer, video rendering and playback, that you have this Mercury Playback Engine GPU acceleration enabled. That's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of the data that's being flowed through your GPU. Most modern day computers, especially Macs, 
uh, and the silicon work chips that they've got going on in there are more than sufficient for Premiere Pro. But if you're working with high resolution files with a hard drive that's not working and you have a lower playback rendering engine that's going on there, those are things that you could wanna check out. And again, lowering your playback resolution temporarily is a way that you can fix some of those laggy components. Another thing that can be killing your playback is unrendered or unprocessed effects and or effects that are really processor heavy. So if you use things like the Lumetri color panel or using warp stabilization, those sorts of things are going to give you kind of an air and playback. And if specifically, you're looking at a timeline where this yellow bar on the top is red, that's going to destroy your playback. So the way that you can do that is you can set just an in and out point here and kind of make sure that you've got something that's going on a little bit like that. And you can actually just hit enter on the keyboard and it'll pre-render your effects so that it has a smoother playback. It'll make that yellow or that red bar go back to green. You'll see that I have this yellow one here. I also can go up to my sequence and render in and out, render the work area. You can see I added a little quick key right there in order to make sure that that's going to be able to work. Um, rendering your audio effects as well is going to be able to help. Another thing which I talked about earlier in a video a couple weeks ago, um, when we're looking right here at our toolbar settings, is this global effects mute. So if you see, if I hit that right there, it's going to take off all of the coloring and the warp stabilization effects that I have on that particular clip. So you can keep editing, working back and forth and when you're ready to render and export you can just click it again render your timeline and export those things as well that's definitely going to be a way that you can speed up your workflow is to kind of kill off any of the unnecessary or processor heavy effects that you have on your timeline that thing should save you a bunch of time let's move on to section two which i think is something that most people are going to find a benefit from which is your hardware limitations mainly let's talk about the type of hard drives that you're utilizing in order to make your edit it happen. Oftentimes what people end up utilizing are these HDD hard drives or things that have a spinning drive. If that's the case, that is a much slower revolution. Even if you get something that's like 7,200 RPMs that's in the NAS or some type of a RAID setup, what you're looking at is a physical spinning disc that is going to be much slower than your solid state drives or your SSDs. Something that I found a lot of success with is editing off of my native SSD drive or if I don't have the enough space there, I utilize a bunch of different smaller shuttle drives, these SSDs that we can use that spin at a much higher revolution so I have transfer rates that are 500, 1,000 megabytes per second. Even now we're starting to see things in 2,000 megabytes per second. If you get NVMe M.2 drives and little enclosures for them, you can have flying speeds in terms of what's going on. A little word to the wise there, you definitely want to make sure that the USB type C cables that you have are rated for that type of transfer speed as well. A huge bottleneck where hard drives and storage are concerned, usually that cleans up a lot of workflow for people in order to make sure that their edits are flying a lot faster. Another thing that can cause choppy playback or generally slow playback in project settings as well is your cache. What you wanna be able to do is go through here, go to settings, go to general right here, and we're gonna go to media cache. You can also delete or remove any media cache that's going on there. It's also stored in these common areas, which is usually on a local hard drive. So if you wanna go through and clean up those things as well, it could help in playback as well. One other thing that might help you, it may not, is if you have 4K footage on a 1080 timeline or 1080 footage on a 4K timeline, there is kind of a scaling mismatch that goes on in those sorts of things. So one of the ways that I fix this is that I either right click on the footage and you can see that you're going to have scale to frame size, or you can do another proxy workflow, or I've set a key quick key up for that as well. So I can kind of reframe stuff. I don't tend to have that problem that much anymore because all of my cameras are shooting at 4K or above. Uh, but maybe that's something that you're dealing with. So that's definitely another thing that you can try. So there are a ton of reasons why you could have laggy, choppy, or generally just slow footage from uncompressed raw files being way too huge for Premiere Pro to process, from your hard drives being too slow, from your actual hardware settings on GPU and CPU being incorrect, from your playback resolution engine being too much, from way too many effects that are going on. And then the last one could potentially be 
is that you've just got a kind of weird buggy version of Premiere that you're working and every so often the new update comes out and it gives us a couple different bugs that are weird. I know sometimes for me, sending things into Media Encoder or working stuff back and forth between After Effects can tend to cause a problem. And if that's the case, then maybe just go to an older version of Premiere. If I'm in here into Creative Cloud, what I can see is Premiere, I got these little ellipses on the side. If I click on that, it'll give me other other versions that I can look at. And you can download older versions of Premiere Pro, at least the ones that you know are working. Sometimes I use the beta version because they're trying to fix bugs. I know you guys have probably done a similar version of that as well. And if that hasn't really fixed your problem, leave me a comment down below on exactly what you're experiencing and we'll troubleshoot it together. And with that being said, ladies and germs, that's another video in the can. If you like the video, like the damn video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for posting notifications because we put out content like this all the time every week in fact so i appreciate you guys looking at this one hopefully this solved your problem if you like this one send it on to one of your friends maybe and we'll see you guys in the next one peace